Greetings. Looks like Big Brother isn't watching us quite so closely tonight. This is what appears to be a Derwent Reg car number plate reading camera. It's not actually an ANPR camera. What it is is basically a standard camera with a standard video output, but it's designed to see in infrared, which is um, is an infrared illuminator and a special infrared camera designed to uh, to pick up uh, to best pick up uh, car number plates, which you wouldn't normally be able to see with uh, as clearly with a normal normal CCTV camera. As I said, it's a standard video output. Um, the input to it is one of these, presumably this one, is between 20 and 24 volts for the illuminator, and this one then would be 12 volts DC for the camera. Um, it's been given me to take a look at because it's not working. Uh, whether the camera's dead or whether the bulb is gone, I don't know. So uh, let's find out. Uh, before I take a look at the illuminator, that's going to be just the boring stuff. Let's have a look inside the camera. And yes, indeed, it would appear that the the blue and the black, or the blue and the red, sorry, wires are the uh, the camera feed. We can just about see down in there the camera unit itself. But I'm going to take try and get this open a lot more so we can see exactly what's inside. What have you is quite an interesting piece of uh, what well, looks like glass. And whether it's coated glass, um, I'm not sure. It's a bit of condensation there. Let's just wipe that off. And what it appears to be is some sort of glass lens with like a gold layer on it, which reflects most light through it back. But if I get a remote control, which my camera can pick up, you just find the button. That light there still shows up, and in fact is the only thing that shows up through the camera. And if I look at that LED floodlight for example, that's all it can see. That's all the light that's coming through. And even this metal halide lamp only allows that much through. Whatever that coating is, being a glass lens, a thermal camera can't see through it. Back in the camera housing then, we've got a heater to uh, presumably get, there, get rid of any condensation inside the unit in cold weather. Um, a spare screw, which is just literally stuck to the sticky pad there. Uh, I don't think it's spare actually, it's probably actually, in fact, I believe it's fallen, it's come off the lens. There's a missing screw there. And obviously the camera itself, which should push out or pull out through the back. And here we go. It's a standard CCTV lens is screwed on to what I think is a half inch sensor on a two board camera which is apparently I think it I uh, read it it's a Sony um, XView uh, sensor the power and video come through then video goes straight off to the um, the BNC connect cable and the power comes via this um, presumably some uh, switch mode uh, power supply board and that's pretty much it there's a model number on the side here which is cam SX800 CSC V3 so uh, Let's see if we can get a signal, let's see if we can get a picture out of this thing. Because I think chances are all that's gone wrong on this is the uh, the bulb's gone and they're about 60 quid. So uh, let's see if we can power this up. And if this has gone wrong, 
it looks like it's a standard part to replace. There'll be a sta probably a standard board cam. Moment of truth. Hey, hey, it's working. It's black and white, but obviously in infrared, that's all you need. You won't be seeing much in color. And it's working. It's quite a very high refresh rate by the looks of it. It's, uh, it's obviously what you want. You want to be able to take very sharp images of number plates so you don't want any blur and that's exactly what this camera seems to be capable of. Uh, obviously when it's watching in infrared this isn't what it would normally see. It would normally see absolutely nothing except what is being backlit oops, in infrared. So if I shine uh, LED, there we go, you can just see the, ref the reflection, the, uh, the reflection of the infrared off my remote control there. If I point the remote straight at it, you can see, there we go, shining nice and brightly. If I try with my torch, it really doesn't want to, doesn't want to see what's, what's with the torch, unless I uh, take that out of the way. But obviously in infrared, that would be a very bright, uh, it would it would be a lighting infrared straight through this lens, and um, and that's all it really wants to see. It doesn't want to be dazzled by headlights or anything. It just wants infrared, and no normal light. It just wants to be able to concentrate on watching number plates. So um, obviously the camera is working and working quite well. Uh, so the uh, arm, the arm and a leg. They were quoted to repair this is obviously um, bullshit. So uh, I think I'll put this back together and take the lamp apart. What am I thinking? This is a teardown. That wasn't a teardown. This is a teardown. Let's have a closer look at that fully functional camera. We have some dip switches along the edge, which would mean uh, it'd be well worth finding out what the actual model number of this camera is, because we'll be able to find out what those switches do then. Uh, there's a sticker there, VH1010CD, I don't know if that's a model number. Well, that's not a part number, but that is. If you look this up, you'll find actually a link to the Bosch website where you can buy a replacement camera and lens housing for the princely sum of just over $3,000, uh, which I think is a bit crazy. You'll buy, you can buy these lenses secondhand for about 40 quid on eBay. Um, I mean, the camera is good, but I didn't think it was, was $3,000 good. Uh, the power supply on the back, at least what I assume is a power supply on the back, uh, that's just a multi-vibrator chip. It's um, uh, H HCF4538. And there's not much else to see on there. As I said, you know, that's a, pretty much a standard monochrome board camera there. I don't think it's, it's worth uh, taking this thing apart to find to, uh, to see any more detail in there. But of course I couldn't resist. After all, we've got this far. So here's some scans of the front and back of each of the camera boards. In both pictures, the board which is mounted closest to the lens is on the left. Um, if this thing had gone bang, uh, I think it wouldn't be worth uh, paying out all that money on a on a new uh, new unit. I mean, you could you could upgrade that for fifty quid to, to HD SDI. Just drop a drop a color full HD board cam on there. I'm sure it'd be uh, pretty good if you get the settings right for um, the frame rate and whatnot. So uh, that's enough with the uh, ridiculously expensive camera. Uh, let's get things, this thing back together again and take a look at the lamp. Here we have another one of those gold filters again. This is so that the uh, the lamp itself isn't um, emitting any visible light, it's all infrared. 
Uh, I want that bit is there for. I don't think that even belongs there. Um, so let's try it once again with this and my remote. If I put that straight up to there. Once again, all it can see is the infrared from that. And we've also got this gold reflector inside and you can see the bulb at the back which looks like a standard uh, halogen bulb. It's actually got a big halogen bulb. Let's just spin it round to the back so you can see it's actually a Bosch UniPF bulb. If I just pop the uh, Drill. Just loosen the uh, the cover, the, the holder on that. I should be able to rotate and remove. There it is. It's an interesting filament. That this is actually a two hundred and twenty watt. 28 and a half volt bulb. Uh, in this, it only the uh, specs only go uh, 20 to 23 volts, which means the bulb will last a lot longer. Uh, if you run it at 20 volts, I think you get 10 years life. If you run it at 23 volts, it's more like two years life. So imagine one of these running at uh, 28 and a half volts, which is what they use normally in these um, these floodlight assemblies. It, uh, it wouldn't last very long at all, but Let's just test that with, uh, with the meter because presumably that's knackered and it's not the power supply that was gone. Yep, that's open circuit. So that's all that's wrong with it. And those bulbs, I said you can pick those up for about 70 quid, which is expensive for a bulb, but considering this whole thing is worth a couple of grand, um, I think it's quite cheap. So this will be probably going back to work, I think, to uh, see if they can buy uh, a replacement bulb. I'm sure they'll be. Pleased to find out that there's uh, not that much wrong with it after all. So how can we test this thing in infrared? I don't have a bulb for this. What I do have is a bulb for this. This is a Denard 300 watt floodlight, 830 nanometers, I believe it is. And uh, the bulbs for this, here's, here's a dead one which I took out. It's almost like an old car headlight, except it's um, 300 watts and 240 volts. Now, to take a look inside this, I'm going to have to smash it open. But unfortunately, there's not a lot to see. The filament would have originally connected here, gone up to this hook, down to this one, up to this one, and down to this one. You can see some remnants of the filament here. And here it is close up. That's lighting sorted. How about something to compare it with? Yep, I got that in the bag as well. These are two old number plates which were on my car once upon a time. What we've got here is an old monochrome CCTV camera which is working quite well considering this is the one I dropped down an old mine shaft straight into water. And on the front is a 35mm lens and this is the view from the infrared camera without the filter on. back to the first one without the filter with the filter and the infrared without the filter and with the filter you can see there's a lamp alongside as well so it can simulate having a headlamp on As you can see, the filter does cut down quite a bit of glare.
This is the V with the lenses reversed. I've got the 50mm lens on my old monochrome camera and I've got the 35mm lens on the infrared camera. This is the view on the monochrome camera without the filter and with it. This is the view on the infrared camera without the filter and with it. The filter does cut down an awful lot of glare. Hope you found this interesting. Uh, thanks for watching.